Hi everyone, my name is Matt Haynes. I'm an audiobook narrator. This is a short video from the world's tallest male narrator. This is a, a challenge that I throw out to other male narrators. See if you can best me. Six feet, ten inches. Let's bring it. Meanwhile, this is part of my series called The Process Project. This is where I'm going to be taking uh, segments of novels and seeing what I can bring to it, uh, a la what I would typically bring to an audition or a sample of uh, the author's work if we're collaborating. So we have the treat of working with Mary Youngberg's book, one of her novels about Rowan Milani, a very complex and exciting character. And what I've done is uh, put to her questions about the context of this scene that I'm about to narrate and also the backstory of the characters. And feel free to uh, to pause this video to have a look at you know my full list of things that I ask the author about. There are many things to consider when I'm reading a sample of an author's work, particularly if I'm being introduced to the novel and the world of her work for the first time. However, this week, what we're going to uh, focus on is the very simple thing of pronunciations. So you'll notice that I have cheated and replaced certain words with the phonetic pronunciation so that I don't have to memorize the pronunciation. I can simply get on with narrating the story and have it all spelled out for me, literally. Also, one of the characters is from Chicago, and it's been a little while since I've brushed up on the Chicago accent. So I take certain words and make sure that I am uh, pronouncing those according to a Chicago uh, approach to certain vowels. Also, the character she's noted in her very helpful notes to me is he's older. And so I'm taking a, a classic trick that I use to convey older and sometimes more uh, grizzled characters, which is to take the S sound and take uh, put it into an SH. So don't be surprised when you see uh, the term, I won't shit here. It's meant to be, I won't sit here, but it's a reminder to me to uh, give it that, that SH grit. Okay, so this is going to be the result of the work that Mary and I have done together with her novel. And then next week, we are going to cover what her process is when creating something. Um, and that's a very exciting part of, of this video series as well. So in the meantime, you may wish to go full screen uh, when uh, watching this. If you want to see how my script works with my narration, just up close. Enjoy. Rowan stared from the floor to ceiling windows of his 154th floor Burj Khalifa office and blew on his steaming cup of coffee. Georges' voice intruded. Monsieur Johnny and Ralph are here. Rowan stepped to the wall and punched the intercom button. Send them in. His colleagues entered the office, and Ralph made a beeline for the coffee carafe on the bar, eyeing him warily. I get the feeling something's happened. Johnny followed Ralph and took the cup of coffee he offered. After taking a sip, he nodded at Rowan. Good morning. What's going on? Rowan pointed at the sofa and armchairs. Have a seat and we'll get to it. The two men sat down, Johnny on the sofa and Ralph in an armchair. Rowan took the armchair adjacent to Ralph's. Here's the short version of what's going on. His phone rang. Irritated, he tugged it from his pants pocket. Sorry, I gotta take this. Ricci, what's up? He plastered the phone against his ear, not wanting it on speaker. Ricci didn't waste any time. It's done, boss. The building went down the way we planned, just a few minutes ago. I'm on site, but not for long. Rowan allowed himself a slight smile, conscious of Ralph's stare turning from curiosity to alarm. Good. I take it no one was wandering around. Not that we saw. There are some windows out. That's all I can see from here. The dust is pretty thick. He paused. I'm hearing sirens, so I better vamoose. I'll be on a plane to Cagliari later today. I just wanted to let you know how it all went down, so to speak. Rowan nodded. Get out of there. You can fill me in later. Thanks for letting me know. He ended the call and set his phone on the low table between the chairs and sofa. 
Ralph murmured, Sweet Jesus, you did it, didn't you? Blew that mosque to kingdom come. Johnny grinned, Now that's damn good news. Ralph bowed his head and rubbed a hand over his face, then gave him a weary gaze. I thought we were going to discuss this further. The ramifications... He paused and shook his head. This act makes you an international terrorist. Stunned, Rowan ran a hand through his hair, frustration heading fast toward anger. You're calling me a terrorist? We did discuss this, and I told you it was a done deal. Ralph shook his head. God almighty, son, I thought you didn't want to be that kind of man. I thought you wanted to be different. I thought you were different. After everything that's happened to you... Tired of the insinuations that felt a hell of a lot like accusations, Rowan bristled. Do you think that during all those ops we conducted, you know, the ones you oversaw, not to mention the black ops Mike and Gabriel and I did, that there was no collateral damage, no civilian casualties? Ralph gulped coffee and smacked the cup on the low table. Good Christ, we operated on behalf of a legitimate government agency. There's a difference. Anger burning hot, Rowan surveyed his colleague and spoke softly. If you think we're an illegitimate enterprise, then what the hell are you doing here? If you think what I'm doing based on threats we face is terrorism. Breathing hard, pushed to the breaking point, he glowered at Ralph and stabbed a forefinger toward the door. Then get out. Johnny leaned forward, coffee cup in both hands, and spoke with sharp authority. Both of you take a chill pill. It's been a long night for you, Rowan, that has yet to end. Ralphie, I know you're done in, he cleared his throat, but I'm not about to sit here and watch you two shit-can your friendship. Capiche? Rowan, still breathing hard, jaws clenched, looked Ralph in the eye, saw contrition mixed with indecision, and knew his older friend needed to save face. He took a long drink, almost choked, and slammed the cup down next to Ralph's. Look, forget about it. Last night we nabbed a Mujahid wannabe, an American. He informed me that Al-Hashimi has a contingent of guys here, in the tower, waiting for the go signal to detonate bombs. We're leaving, going somewhere, maybe the estate. Ralph's shoulders sagged. Good God, the shit never ends. I didn't realize... He fixed Rowan with a speculative look. You really think the estate is our best option? Rowan raised his hand and let it fall. I haven't had time to think past knowing we can't stay here. The state security guys confiscated a stash of javelins near the airport last night, but what if they have more somewhere else? What's to stop them from targeting the tower or the jet? Again, that's from Mary Youngberg's Rowan Milani novels. If you would like to find out more, here is where you can learn about Mary Youngberg. Next week, her process. In the meantime, as your narrator and teacher of narration, I hope that my voice and your ears meet again real soon.